Welcome to Podiatry Marketing. I'm your host, Jim McDonald, joined as always by my trusty co-host, Tyson Franklin. Tyson, how's it going today? I'm fantastic today, Big Jim. Good to be here. Okay, so let's get on to today's topic, which is the importance of being genuine. But genuine, yeah, like- do you say genuine or genuine? <laughs> When I think of genuine, there's like a, an American singer, that's, that's his name. It, he had a famous song called Pony, but we won't get into that today. But yeah, no, I, tell us about being genuine. What is the benefits uh, of doing that? The main part, if you're in the public eye, or even if people listening to this podcast, if they've never watched the video or seen us before, we're pretty much, we're in their ear and we're in the ear for an extended period of time. This sort of relates to more with your patients. If you're doing marketing to your patients, to your community, you are going to be in the public eye a lot. And I think it's important that you will be judged and people will have a certain sort of expectation when they meet you based on what they've heard, what they've heard, what they've seen, what they've seen you talk about, right? And the important part is do you live up to that expectation when they walk into your clinic and meet you for the first time? Yeah, first impression is hugely important, but you also have to back it up with who you are, right? If you're putting on uh, a face or you're not being genuine, then uh, people are going to read that pretty quickly. Yeah, so when they meet you, are you going to be less than impressive? Are they going to meet you and go, oh, well, that was underwhelming. I was expecting (laughs) so much more. Or will you meet or exceed their expectations? And one of the comments I've always received from people when they've met me face-to-face, they've said, you're exactly the same as what you sound like on the podcast. When I've watched you on a video, even when I've read your book, they said you come across as exactly the same person. And my wife sometimes tells me that's one of my biggest flaws <laughs> is I'm always exactly the same person in any situation. I, I don't, I try to modify myself a little bit, but I am who I am. So when I was doing any marketing for my podiatry business, if a patient saw that, and they came in and met me, they were going to get exactly what they saw. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense because you want to have that, you want to build trust. And by being genuine to who you are and the way you treat people, it, it's that kind of, you don't, it doesn't feel like a bait and switch, right? It's this quiet, politically correct Tyson uh, on the surface. And then once you get to know him <laughs> in the clinic or on a podcast and he's open, very honest and, and straightforward about things, people like to have that consistency and personality. And Definitely, ever since I've known you, you're, you're that guy. It could be, or I'll tell you, you got the name Big Jim. Is, <laughs> but it could be exactly the same as you see someone on a video or in any of their marketing and they seem a little bit out there and they're a bit louder and they look a little bit different and they sound different. You go, wow, that's the place I want to go to because that's what I'm expecting. And then you go and meet them and they're like a dead fish. They're boring. Wow, that's not what I expected. Or it's no different to if they meet your, see, I think your marketing has to represent not just you as an individual, but it has to represent your business and it has to represent your team. So it's important to make sure your business, rep, yeah, you are normally reflected in your business, but then the team members you bring on board should fit that same form of, sort, that same sort of culture. And even though you can have people that are completely different personality, I never had anybody in my clinic that wasn't a good talker that couldn't hold a conversation, talk about any topic almost underwater if they had to, with little or no information. That's, that was like our, our rule. You had to know a little bit about a lot of topics, so the conversation was always interesting. Yeah, I think you have to be well-rounded, right? I think it sounds like a lot of your staff is that way. I know that when I was working with my clinic staff, there are just certain kind of cultural touchstones we have or posts and the w- ways of operating that, yeah, you can be different personalities and those things, but those core kind of fundamentals of the culture of your team have to be intact. Yeah. So if your marketing says that your business is modern, upbeat, friendly, then that's exactly how your team should behave when they walk into the clinic. When a patient arrives in your business, it should be upbeat, modern, friendly. It, your team should be behaving the same way. When you're answering the telephone, if all the marketing is saying you're upbeat and friendly and someone answers the phone, they go, hello. Yeah, like Lurch off of the Adams family, then that, that isn't really congruent with what all the marketing said. And I've had, I have done that where I've rung a business, or I've telephoned a business, and the person who's answered the phone sounds like a dead mullet. And do you know what a mullet is? Just before I throw that out. I, I assume it's a fish. It's not a, yeah, it's not okay. a bad it's a hair. Fish. It's a bad haircut. Oh, yeah. 
that would have been, yeah, the answer to the phone, a bad mullet. And that was really, oh, cough. And that was really off-putting. So I went, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And, and it's how you greet your patients. If you're upbeat and friendly, your team should be meeting the patients when they arrive, being very upbeat and friendly. Otherwise, I think your business will suffer from that. And I've seen businesses that look beautiful, everything about is great. You walk in and the receptionist at the front counter looks like they've been weaned on vinegar their whole life. And you meet them and they just, they're not friendly, they're rude. You sit there going, wow, this is not what I expected. And as soon as you feel a bit uncomfortable, you're starting to make decisions and judgments about the business. Yeah, when there's that, when it doesn't connect, right? When the kind of the, the front of it or the, the perception of what something is doesn't meet the reality, that's almost worse than having like low expectations from to begin with. Because if someone is expecting a, a great experience, expecting to have kind of the best in class care, and if any, if, if it's not consistently that way, people will like it less than, like I said, even it's something that they have low expectations for. Yeah, and everyone's heard this say, fake it till you make it. But I think there's a limit to how you do that. I think you can, you can fake being positive if you're not really feeling positive. Yeah, you keep telling yourself, oh, I'm positive, I'm positive. Even if a little voice in your head is going, oh, no, I'm not. I'm feeling a bit down, feeling a little bit negative at the moment. You can keep telling yourself that. And I think that's what the fake it till you make it is all about. But to actually fake your personality just to try and be more successful, get more followers, get more likes on your videos, doing all those sort of things to try and attract patients. I think in the end, your true personality will come out. And, and I've met people who they come across as being a really nice, kind person. And then when all of a sudden the shit hits the fan a little bit, you see their true personality come out and all of a sudden they just erupt. You go, whoa, I didn't see that coming. And you wonder, where, where's that been hidden? Are they a serial killer that I'm totally unaware of? <laughs> Hopefully not. I hope they're not John Wayne Gacy or something. That'd be unfortunate for you if you're in the presence. But I know what you mean. There, there's this kind of fine line between imposter syndrome and yeah. being disingenuous. And everyone's going to have times you're new in practice or trying something new or you're just unsure of yourself and you have that imposter syndrome slip into your mind. But as long as you're being true to yourself and your patient, true to your patients and also the direction you want to send your practice, right? You want to build your practice in a specific direction. If you're being true to all those things, it's going to be normal to have the occasional, not lack of self-confidence, but just a little bit of uncertainty, right? And uncertainty is part of life. There's no guarantees, right? So as long as you're being true to yourself, working in the best interest of your patients, and really trying to move your practice in towards a direction that you'd be excited with for taking care of your patients, that's really what matters. Yeah, and I jokingly say to people, deep down, I feel like I'm an introvert, not an extrovert. But the only way I counteract being an introvert is I have to be an extrovert to balance the, the two out. And, and I think it's really important. I think in the end, you just need to be you. And if that doesn't always gel with the, the patients that you're currently attracting, then just go and find where you fit. So if you like, it's no different if you wanted to have a, a sports clinic or an MSK biomechanics clinic, you're going to act and dress a particular way. And your marketing is going to say, that's pretty much what you are. If a patient saw your marketing say, oh, sports clinic, and they rocked up and you're wearing a suit and tie, there we go. Wasn't expecting that. Then again, depends where the clinic is. If you're in a very up class, up market, clinic, there may be some places where they expect a suit and tie, even though you may be a high-end sports type clinic. No, that makes sense. And I think there's also an aspect of not only putting yourself out there as the expert, you definitely want to do that. But I think there's a genuineness about caring about other people. And I think people love talking about themselves. When you genuinely care about your patients, your staff, the people you work with, and you're asking questions and showing that you make efforts on their behalf, maybe not that you have to like sacrifice to the bone, right? But at the same time, by, by showing people that you do genuinely care about their health, their activity level, and these things, it really shines through, right? Working on soft skills can be one way of just becoming a better listener, asking better questions so you can take better care of people. That's true. You can pretend that you care about people, but if you really don't care about people, eventually it will show. If you did a particular treatment on a patient, and you go, oh, yeah, I, I really want to make sure that's going fantastic, that it's working out well, you're not in pain. And then you never get back in touch with that patient to find out what happened. 
did you really care or was it just a speech that you gave? So I know if you were doing, say, nail surgery on somebody, you did it that night, they leave the clinic and you say, this is what should happen over the next few hours. Take up Panadol or what you would call Iba, Iba, what What's your painkiller in America? <laughs> ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Take a bit of ibuprofen over here. might be Panadol. Go and lie down a couple of hours. It might throb a little bit. Pain will go away and you'll be fine. Now, if you gave them a call that night, you know, 7 o'clock that night, thinking, oh, they may have had the dinner already, quick call and just said, hey, just, just checking in on you to see how your ingrown toenail went after surgery today. How are you feeling? And they would be going, wow, you said that you cared. Now you just showed me that you cared. And if they had an appointment a few days later, and for some reason that appointment wasn't, they had to cancel it, and you phone them back up yourself, not your receptionist, you phone yourself, said, hey, just checking to see how everything's going. Once again, you showed that you care. So your actions back up the words that you actually say. That was a great example. So I just think in the end, you, you can be, if you're just genuine at all times, it's far less work than trying to pretend that you're somebody else. And in the end, I, I think it will work out for you if you just be yourself. If you're a caring person, be caring. If you're not a caring person, I'm not saying don't, don't care about your patients, but don't pretend to be caring. If you're not really a caring person, just be yourself. And there'll be patients that like that. And there'll be patients that go, geez, I don't like this podiatrist. He doesn't care. <laughs> You'd be a caring, you would have been a caring podiatrist, Jim. Oh, I, I cared probably too much. And I, I don't know if you can care too much, but yeah, it's finding that it's a fine line between, yeah, definitely cared about those patients. But at the same time, you, you, you're not living their life, right? So you can't make sure they don't get that, that, that dressing wet or have them not walk on that cast or something. That sometimes those, you try to do the best job you can to kind of act in the patient's best interest. But at the same time, part of caring about a patient is like letting them take care of themselves or helping them take care of themselves. Yeah. And I used to say, I, I will care as much as they care. <laughs> so if they don't care about the problem, then my care level isn't up there with them. But if they we genuinely cared about the problem and cared about getting a great result, then my care factor went up as well. But I think sure. bottom line, you just, in anything that we're doing, whether it's your marketing, working with patients, the team that you get together, it just t try and just be you. Don't look at another clinic and see what they do or hear someone on a podcast, you see how they behave when they're on the podcast or, or you see them in an event and think, oh, I have to be like that to be successful in podiatry. No, you just need to be you and then find the right patients that fit with who you are. And once you do that, the, the clinic will grow. My, my clinic, like I was a bit nutty at work and I attracted nutty patients, but they were fun patients as well. And together we, we all had a great time. That's awesome. So I have nothing else to cover on this particular subject, Jim. So if you've got anything else to add, if not, we can say farewell. Yeah, no, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. I think... I think it is a good topic because sometimes we get caught up on, like you mentioned, looking at see what other people are doing. There's a lot of kind of influencers or people out there that have a specific way of handling themselves mm. and being true to yourself is, is important while taking you know, excellent care of your patients. Actually, on that subject, I know if you've ever watched Gary V or some other people like Gary V, and they swear that much they'd make a sailor blush that you sit there just go, oh my God, they swear a lot. And I have seen some podiatrists go down that path where all of a sudden they're just dropping swear words like there's no tomorrow. I'm going, really? Do you re is that really getting the message across? <laughs> and I've seen people complain about what they've said and they've basically told them, go and get if you don't like it. And I'm like, but then I know those people and go, that's not you. When I talk to you face to face, you're not like that. So I'm thinking, oh, sometimes I know, are you trying to be something you're not? But yeah, I think long term, they can only do it for so long until eventually people see that it's not really them. Yeah, any kind of act at some point in time, it'll wear off and uh, the, the true person will be revealed. Yeah, let's blame the influencers. Let's point all the blame. <laughs> if anyone's watching the video, all the blame is at the influencers. Uh, you can point the blame to the people that try to act like the influencers, I think. But uh, yeah, anyways. Yeah, okay, let the influencers be the influencers. Don't impersonate them. <laughs> okay, Jim, that is fantastic. I look forward to talking to you next week. Sounds good, Tyson. Okay, see ya.